Okay, so we come to a couple um, of videos on perhaps the, one of the most important topics in this course uh, in terms of modern machine learning, which is stochastic gradient descent. And this is um, a gradient descent method that's um, sort of completely different to what we've, um, the deterministic methods that we've talked about before, in that this is stochastic, it uses randomness um, to do gradient descent. So you can imagine a gradient descent algorithm that's somehow randomly walking down um, the surface of my cost function um, towards the minimizer uh, in a random way. And this is super important because this is actually absolutely fundamental um, to modern machine learning. So in things like deep learning um, and, and, and these uh, modern big data problems where we use complicated machine learning methods, at their very core, the way that they work is stochastic gradient descent. It's so ubiquitous that it's not uh, funny. And to, to demonstrate that, you know, if we go to something like um, you know, the documentation for TensorFlow, which is sort of the, the primary um, uh, method for training up uh, uh, deep, you know, um, deep learning models uh, on very large data sets. And then if you really look into the, uh, the optimizers that are implemented um, in TensorFlow, so this is for very big data and for um, very large scale uh, deep learning problems, you know, the optimizers sitting under the hood that are implemented here is this exactly this stochastic gradient descent. And this is what actually gets used underneath uh, all of the deep learning um, algorithms uh, that you learn about today. So here we're going to, um, I'm going to introduce it a little bit uh, and over the next few videos um, we'll talk about, um, we'll talk in detail how it works, uh, some of the properties um, and then we'll, we'll uh, explain by the end just why this is so uh, important uh, for deep learning and for big data machine learning problems. Okay, so here's a general machine learning problem. So a lot of the time uh, in machine learning or even in statistics, um, you know, a thing that we need to do all the time is to minimize the sum of squared errors, right? So if you think about something as simple as linear regression or logistic regression, then fundamentally what you're doing uh, is you are finding a model in linear regression, you know, that model is a straight line or a you know, straight, high dimensional straight line uh, which minimizes the sum of squares of errors between that model uh, and some data UI, right? So the structure of the, um, uh, of the cost function that you have looks like this, right? It's a sum uh, of, you know, it's an L2 type norm, the sum of square distances uh, between my model and the data. And the same goes for logistic regression uh, and the same goes for general cost functions. The same actually holds in, um, you know, uh, in neural networks, uh, even complicated methods like that. Um, so, you know, to generalize that from, uh, from regression, um, a very, very general way that we can write this uh, function uh, is as this sum, right? So in, in, in generally machine learning and all of many of these different variants, what we're doing is we're minimizing a function which has this specific form. It looks like um, the sum of a bunch of, uh, uh, of individual functions. And here, um, in, a, uh, uh, in a statistics or in a machine learning problem, this index i, this is counting over all of the uh, um, pieces of data uh, that I have, or pieces of, you know, all of the, uh, of my pieces of data. So, you know, in um, linear regression, you know, the sum here is being done over sort of like every row uh, in my design matrix. So over every piece of data that I have, I evaluate this sort of sub-function, sub-cost function, fi, and then I add all of these things up. And so very, very often, uh, this fi is going to be uh, a distance squared, but it doesn't need to be. It can be um, different things as well. But the key thing is that sum over my data. So the big idea in stochastic gradient descent is to look at that cost function, right? To look at that sum um, and to say, you know, in a gradient descent method, fundamentally I need to calculate the gradient of this f of x, of this cost function. And so the big idea in stochastic gradient descent is to approximate uh, the gradient of this f of x by the gradient of one of these f of i's. Right? So what I'm going to do is every time I iterate with stochastic gradient descent, I'm going to pick one of these fi's, so one of my pieces of data, and I'm going to evaluate the gradient of that fi. Uh, 
And so I'll use that to take a step in my gradient descent. So I'll use that to approximate um, the full um, f of x, the full cost function f of x, and then we'll do that again. So, you know, and we randomly sample um, these f, uh, uh, you know, randomly sample one of my pieces of data, calculate, do a very quick, cheap computation of the gradient uh, of one of these fi's, uh, and then we'll randomly do it again. So we randomly pick bits of data out, uh, and then we, um, uh, and then we uh, uh, keep doing it. So we sort of randomly jiggle around, um, but we are randomly head in the general direction of the gradient of this f of x. And we head down the slope. So let's jump from that um, to an application of this. So this is something um, uh, that I've, this is a slide that I've shown you before. It's from this, you know, uh, from this very beautiful paper. This is, um, you know, Cyan paper, but you can find it for free on the archive. Uh, it's an introduction to deep learning uh, for applied mathematicians. And so, you know, you can think of uh, this, the example that they step through in this is this case where you've got just two dimensions, um, you know, you've got uh, two dimensions, uh, two variables that you're trying to look for, uh, that, you, that your data represents in, so x and y coordinates. You have some crosses, you have some circles, and you're trying to find a surface which separates between those. So, you know, some sort of hyperplane which separates um, between those. And you do this using um, uh, a, a deep neural network, which has got some number of uh, internal layers. So we feed in our x and y coordinates of all of my pieces of data here. I have these outputs, uh, which are, um, are, are these points, crosses or circles. Uh, and I want to find this function which separates um, nicely between them. And the way that you do that um, is you have these weights and these um, bias vectors um, that you're trying to, these parameters, which sit inside each of these uh, functions here, these activation functions that form the nodes of my network. Um, and then I, I sum up the difference between uh, my data, right, so my ones and zeros of my data here, and this complicated function uh, f of xi. So, you know, um, uh, all of my pieces of data here pass through um, uh, this composition of functions. So what does that f look like? Well, remember these uh, sigmas are sigmoid functions, so the sigmoidal functions that you have in logistic regression. Um, and we compose them, so you know, feeding data through these layers is a process of um, composing uh, this function uh, within itself with different weights each time. So it's a very, very ugly cost function, um, but the key feature about it is that if I have 10 data points, I have the sum of this fi, you know, this internal function here, um, that I sum up over all of my data. And so exactly the way that stochastic gradient does, uh, descent works to find the minimizer of this cost function is it's going to randomly choose uh, one of these pieces of data at a time, so one of these 10 pieces of data uh, at a time, and then it's going to, um, uh, and, and, and then it's going to um, uh, uh, calculate a step in that direction, um, and then it's going to somehow wander down this, uh, wander down this slope. So here's, um, uh, some pseudocode uh, for how this works. So here's the pseudocode to um, minimize one of these functions uh, that is one of these sums. And so the structure of this, so you know, essentially, you know, the line five here looks exactly like the sorts of gradient descent algorithms we've had before. So my new step um, is the previous step uh, minus some step uh, in the gradient of my, you know, the negative gradient of my cost function. So the only difference here is that now the gradient of my cost function, I'm not calculating it uh, in this full 10-dimensional space um, anymore, this full high-dimensional space. I'm picking one direction, uh, or one piece of data, uh, uniformly at random here. I'm going to calculate the gradient in that single um, uh, dimension for that, you know, for that single piece of data that I pick. Um, and I'm going to randomly, or I'm going to fix, uh, in all of cases, um, uh, this lambda k, you know, this uh, step size, then we'll step in that direction randomly. And then we keep repeating that, so we keep randomly choosing a piece of data at which to evaluate, um, uh, evaluate my, um, uh, my function, uh, and then we randomly walk down the hill. So we actually fix this um, a lot of the times, so or different thing, uh, methods that I'll show you in a sec, um, and then we'll um, step down the hill. So let me just show you quickly how this works. Um, you know, the, uh, the example from this um, Applied Mathematicians uh, Introduction to Deep Learning has some MATLAB code, uh, 
So, you know, I won't talk about this in detail, um, but just to say, you know, here's there are the 10 data points that I had. Um, here's setting up um, these, uh, these weights, you know, this activation, this complicated activation function. And then what happens to minimize the, um, this cost function, you know, there's a gradient, there's a stochastic gradient descent uh, method where each time I randomly, uh, each time I step through this, uh, this cost function or this gradient descent algorithm, I randomly choose a piece of data uh, from the 10 uh, pieces of data that I have here. So I randomly choose a piece of data, uh, I calculate a gradient uh, uh, using that random piece of data, and then I keep taking these steps. And then the way that this works is that this is actually going to do a million iterations uh, of this, and you'll see uh, this all takes only a couple of seconds uh, to run, and then it's going to spit out um, a little picture here for us of what the cost function uh, of what the cost function uh, looks like. So this is actually uh, uh, doing um, this gradient descent uh, on this exact problem here. And so, you know, it, as you can see, it takes, you know, done um, a million steps of this algorithm here, and it sort of jiggles about a little bit randomly, uh, but eventually converges down, you know, this is plotting the cost function here, so the cost function is getting smaller and smaller and smaller randomly over time, um, and this is converging to some solution, it actually converges to a solution that looks like this, that actually separates um, between these two. Uh, and that's how um, and that's how it works. So, to give you one more um, description of how this looks, um, uh, let's take uh, one little look at my favourite uh, website here. This bird's eye view of optimis optimization algorithms. So you can click on this link uh, and find it here. You know, it has a section on the stochastic gradient method. So actually, let's, let's take a look at that, and we'll show you how this works. So you know, there's nothing new under the sun. This this method actually. Um, comes from something called the robbins munro method, which is, uh, came from 1951, right? This is a very old picture of the paper that set this out. It came from 1951, so this is actually very, uh, this is actually very old. So let me show you some examples of how this algorithm works. So I said that you have this step size here, right? You choose this lambda k, this step size somehow, um, and you can just fix that to be a constant number. And if you do that, then this is sort of how this um, stochastic gradient descent uh, works. And if you choose very small step sizes, you can see that you randomly wander about my cost function here, but you uh, converge towards the optimum. And you, um, uh, you, you, don't, you see that you don't necessarily hit the solution and stay there. That's different uh, to what we had before uh, with the deterministic methods, you jiggle about. Bit, there's some variance here, and we'll talk in the next video about how that, uh, exactly how to quantify that variance. Um, you don't have to take the same step size each time. You can set the step size to get smaller um, over time. So you start with very big steps and then get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can see that that kind of works a little bit better. You get some, you get a uh, small variance around the solution here. Um, yeah, and there's, there's all sorts of different things that you can do. So here's a, a, a less well-conditioned problem, right? And so you can see that um, you can get the same sort of instability as you had for, um, uh, for uh, the gradient descent, descent methods that we talked about before, especially as you make the step sizes larger. But, you know, it kind of works. It randomly uh, jiggles about, uh, but it works. Um, now, there's a lot more to say about stochastic gradient descent. There's something called momentum, which is very common uh, in machine learning. We won't talk about this. Um, but you can go to this website and play around with some of these methods and you can um, read through pretty, pretty quickly uh, what momentum is. There are these hacks to make stochastic gradient descent uh, work better. Um, so, the, um, uh, the point of all this is that stochastic gradient descent is a sort of a different paradigm uh, for how we've talked about uh, optimization before because it uses randomness. So you randomly get close um, to the solution. Um, but you can see you're never going to actually get to the solution and just stick there. You always wander about a bit. So in the next video, uh, we're going to talk about this wandering aboutness um, and what that actually means and where that actually comes from.